Hey there, it's Seb Fry here with yet another exciting episode of It's a Seb Show. And today I want to talk about negative showing feedback. So when you put your home up for sale, uh, you know, you're going to have people come and look at it and they're going to be going with a real estate agent and your real estate agent, that is the you know, listing agent, if that person is doing a good job, that agent will uh, reach out to all the agents who show the property and ask for feedback. They'll uh, call them or text them or email them or maybe all of the above and say, hey, how did the showing go? Any feedback? And that feedback will be communicated to the uh, seller. Okay. Now, you may find that uh, sometimes there's no feedback forthcoming. Maybe the agent uh, who shows the property will never respond to any of the requests for feedback. And what does that mean? It means they're not interested in your house. And uh, it's really hard to like infer anything from that. Um, but uh, certainly it means that probably from that buyer, an offer is not forthcoming. I can't really think of when I've actually ever had a, an offer coming from a buyer uh, whose agent had just never ever <laughs> responded to a request for feedback. But what you're gonna find is you're gonna find that, you know, not everybody who comes through your home is gonna love it. Not every single person will. Um, and sometimes that will express itself in negative feedback. Now, uh, obviously, like one of the most hurtful things that anyone can say actually is that the home is overpriced, right? They'll say, ah, I don't, I don't see you that you're gonna get like you know whatever it is a million five that you're asking for this property. Uh, that is really, uh, ah, man, that hurts when you hear that one. I certainly sympathize with you. I don't like that one even a little bit. Uh, other people will say it needs too much work. You may hear that sometimes. Oh, it just needs too much work. It's not right for my clients. You'll hear that a lot of times too. Uh, you'll hear um, maybe, uh, you know, I feel like there isn't enough room to entertain or the backyard just is too small for what I need, right? You'll hear that quite a bit. Now, before I say this next part here, I want you to understand this is very important is that, you know, not every buyer is going to love your home, even if your home is awesome, even if there is nothing wrong with the presentation, there's nothing wrong with the condition, there's nothing wrong with the price, there's nothing wrong with the marketing, there's nothing wrong with the market. Even so, not everyone is going to love your home because you know what, here's a little secret. Not every buyer is an actual real buyer. A lot of people are just out there looking, right? They're just professional lookers, even with COVID when they have to do all this paperwork right now to get into a home, a lot of those people will never end up buying anything. They're always gonna find a reason to like not buy a property, right? So uh, yeah, unfortunately they're kind of wasting your time, but that's always been true throughout all of uh, history. So just please bear in mind that when you do get that negative feedback, a lot of it is just noise because at the end of the day, only one person is gonna buy your property. And yes, you will hopefully be getting multiple offers, but you know what? You're probably gonna get more non-offers than actual offers. So just brace yourself for that, uh, you know, not glowing feedback which you might get. And, and you might, you probably will get a lot of great feedback as well uh, because, you know, people want to be polite. And a lot of times I find people do want to tell you, you know, the positive things about your house, but you probably already know those anyway. So that, that positive feedback isn't really as helpful to me as the negative feedback. So here's the uh, hard life lesson I want to share with you about negative showing feedback, right? you know, uh, negative showing feedback or any kind of showing feedback, really, it's kind of like uh, the uh, Chinese fortune cookie thing, right? You know, they say, hey, when you read a fortune in the Chinese fortune cookie, you should always follow that up with uh, in bed, right? So like whatever the fortune cookie says, you add in bed to it, right? So I'm not going to say you add in bed to your showing feedback, but what I'm going to say is you should add for the price, for the price. Those three words you add on to any negative showing feedback you get. And they will say, well, it felt like the home was a little small for the price, right? It felt like the backyard wasn't quite big enough for the price. I really felt like the condition wasn't quite what I wanted it to be for the price, right? With the right price, any property will magically have all of the problems go away. Every single problem, you know, like I didn't feel there was enough garage space for the price, right? If you put that property at $1, guess what? No one's gonna have any problem with the garage space or the backyard or the square footage or the condition or you know whether it's a, an electric range versus a gas range. All those problems go away and all of a sudden, everybody loves the property. Everybody does. For $1, it's hard to find any property that's not gonna sell. 
So what I want you to bear in mind is that when you get this negative feedback, you really need to understand that what they're basically saying is that for the price that you're asking, they were looking to find more value in that particular aspect of the property, which they're giving you that negative feedback about. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have the wrong price, but if you hear a lot of negative feedback that focuses around specific items, right? Like road noise, for example, I think there was too much road noise or the property wasn't updated as much as I wanted it to be for the price. If you keep on hearing these same sorts of things, you know, multiple times from multiple different buyers, that really is a sign that for the price, the property is not what the market is expecting to see. And at that point, you really might want to look at doing a price adjustment. So there you go. I hope this has been helpful, uh, putting some of that negative feedback into a bit of perspective for you. Let me know, what do you think? Was that interesting to you? Did you find that valuable? If so, give me a comment, man, I would love a comment. Or even a thumbs up would be terrific, or a thumbs down if you thought it sucked. Uh, and you know what I would really love? Man, oh man, if you would share this with somebody that you know who is getting some feedback on their home, which they maybe hoped uh, was perhaps something different. All right, well, that is it for this very, very exciting and instructional episode of It's a Seb Show. I do hope you have enjoyed watching. But hey, listen, that's going to be it for this episode. But don't worry. Hey, let's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to have another episode up again before too long.